Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. I mean, it's time for another a live stream. Today is Wednesday, December 13th, 2023. And today, what I want to go over is the swag that I tried not to pick up, but I ended up picking up anyway uh, while I was at TRE. It's a convention. And like many conventions, there's just stuff that people give away. Some of the stuff that I'm getting is stuff that I have to test, not have to test, that I get to test. Uh, I did get a couple of pairs of shoes. Uh, I think you guys have seen most of them, like this one, the Puma Fast R2. And I'm not counting that as swag because that's, you know, work. But uh, there's just some of the other stuff that like the booths give away or the people that I meet give away. And um, yeah, it's not really for review. It's just swag. So we'll go over that. But first... Let's say hi to everyone listening on the podcast on the audio only version. Uh, I think I've been a little bit behind on the upload. So um, by the time you hear this, it might be Friday for you guys. So if it is, welcome to the weekend. And if it's not, hang in there. Weekend's coming. <laughs> uh, and everyone else watching this later, but not live, you LBNLs, welcome to you guys as well. You are listening to the number one podcast to figure out what's in this green bag uh, <laughs> uh i don't know why i find that so funny but um i'm finding it amusing and hopefully you guys are having a good night because i'm guessing most of you guys are probably watching this at night i feel like it's an evening thing you guys should let me know of you lbnls are you watching this is it more at night or during the day i'm envisioning everyone watching this at, at night but i guess i just i've never i don't really dive into the stats much on the kofuzi run club page I just have fun there. I don't treat it like uh, something I'm trying to grow. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not like attacking it like I do other social media. Does that make sense? Anyway, I'm just here and hope, I'm glad that you guys are here. Um, all right. David DeFrangia says, well, is it a red bag? Or in CV76, is what shade of green is it? This, it's like, a, I'm guessing lime. The, the camera is doing something weird to it. On camera, it looks a little bit more like uh, there's like some orange in there that I don't see in real life. This is like a light green. It's it's lighter than Kelly green, I would say, by a lot. I don't know, but I could be way off. <laughs> um, all right, let's see who else we got in here. Uh, Martha says that Dal Walter melon flavor is now permanent. That's true. And here's why. There's two reasons why that Dal Walter melon announcement is permanent is is important. Um, Tailwind is a, is a booth that I did have a scheduled appointment with, um, them and a bunch of other brands. I don't know if they're always represented by a certain PR company or if the brands are represented by PR companies during just for TRE or special events like this to make, and someone else handles all the scheduling. But like, I talked to one PR person and they're like, Hey, I represent six brands. Do you want to meet with any of them? And this person set me up in 15 minute meetings. And I was like, Oh, these are going to be real short. Because it takes you about seven minutes to walk from booth to booth, depending on how far apart they are. Um, but anyway, so I had this meeting, and Tailwind is a permanent uh, Tailwind. Doll Walter Melon is a permanent flavor for Tailwind. That means two things: one, it's not going away. That's the most important thing because it's the, I think it's the best Tailwind flavor. And number two, it means it's because it's no longer a special edition. I think now it gets sold in the big bags. Before, I think it only got sold in the sleeves. So let me see if I, I might have drank all of the Tailwind. They sent, they, in this bag, they gave a bunch of flavors. So lemon, those aren't drank because I don't love the lemon. Raspberry, that will probably be the absolute last one. Drink. I, I don't know if I like raspberry less or the unflavored. Uh, Mandarin. I got some recovery mix. I drank two recovery mixes a day while I was at Thierry and CIM. Thank goodness that they gave me so many. Um, and they also gave me this, um, the rapid hydration, um, which is cool. It's um, this one. I don't think this one comes in bigger packages, uh, but I don't know if you guys have had the rapid hydration, but that's one of the things that they were uh, demoing uh, on the show floor. Um, but the idea is that it has 45 calories, um, 12 carbs, but it has um, sea salt, it has potassium, vitamin C, calcium carbonate, magne 
magnesium oxide. It's supposed to um, dissolve super fast and then get into your system super fast. So that's a little bit of a different um, product. So I think it's more of just pure electrolytes rather than a uh, sports fuel. And then they have the um, recovery mix, which I enjoy. Apparently, I drank all the Dahl Walter melon too. There was a bunch of it in here. They were really generous. Oh, no. No, more recovery mix chocolate. I got all, I put everything, all my swag in here. That's why I have to keep digging through it. Um, but yeah, so normally it comes in the sachets like this that fill up a big water bottle or two smaller water bottles. Um, but now dull watermelon, because it's a permanent flavor, will come in the big bags so you could scoop your own, which I think is useful. And then I, I did ask if that, um, if they will ever make smaller ones, because I always have to pinch. You pinch it and then you pour like half in and then you have this like open bag of powder, right? Because um, I usually don't have, I don't carry water bottles big enough to require the whole thing unless I'm using a full-on hydration pack and I've got a bladder, you know? Um, but they said, no, nah, we either sell it in the, if you need smaller amounts, we sell the big bag for that or you get the kind of, I call them the, the tall boys, double wides, whatever you want to call them, the bigger bag. So that's, that's the news on the Tailwind front. But yeah, that was the first. And and they did give me a bag of Tailwind. Oh, there's other Tailwind stuff in here too. I forgot. Um, in this bag was a pair of Tailwind socks, which I've already worn. That's why they're like this. But Tailwind socks. <laughs> We're getting right into the unboxing for today. And then they gave me this. A, uh, a neck gaiter. Multifunctional seamless wear. Um, a Tailwind, I was going to call it a buff, but that's a trade name, uh, a Tailwind neck gaiter, which will come in handy as it's starting to get real cold now. All right. Um, yeah, Daniel Burton says, this is a bottomless bag. There is a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Um, and Mark Peterson says, speaking of recovery, are you all right after chewing the pebbles you weren't supposed to chew yesterday? Uh, yeah, yeah, that was this. The before you start product uh, that came in the runner box, the surprise like subscription box thing we opened yesterday. Um, there's little like turmeric, turmeric and ginseng pellets in there, and you're not supposed to chew them, but I didn't realize that until I chewed them. I'm fine. I actually feel really good today, and I had a great run, and I got a lot of work done. I'm sure that's not related. But it did make me think, next time I have a cold, I am probably going to buy some turmeric and some ginseng pills. Maybe not ginseng pills. I don't feel like... I've, I've taken ginseng like my entire life. Growing up, I took a lot of it. I don't know that it does anything. But the turmeric, I just felt like that made me feel good. So maybe, maybe there's something to that. You know? I don't know. Um, all right. Paz Park says, hi, Kyle. One suggestion. I wonder if you could have named CIM Runners Weekend title as Olympic Trials Chasers at CM 2023 and not OTQ. feel like some beginners might not, might not know what OTQ and skipped. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, the title is already really long. I think it's like OTQ Chasers at CIM 2023 Runners Weekend period California International Marathon is the title right now because I've edited it because I did a search for California International Marathon and the video did not show up in like the first 10 videos. Videos from last year showed up first when I searched California International Marathon. When I did CIM, it was fine. So I've just kind of, I think I'm gonna leave it as it is. Um, yeah, I'm hoping that uh, people that are familiar with me would click on it. Maybe I'll get the benefit of the doubt there, but that's an interesting point. Hmm. But also at the same time, the video is kind of meant, it's a, CIM is a race for nerds, running nerds. And I mean that in the best way. I'm a running nerd. Uh, we're all running nerds here. And um, I feel like maybe a lot of us knew what OTQ is. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, Jacob Mooney says, I proudly rep my non-elite shirt as a guest on a live stream Monday night. Awesome. Jacob, you have to send me a link for that. You could DM me on Strava. Just kidding. I don't have them on. Um, send me a DM. Let me know where I can find that. And then send me a screenshot. That'd be awesome. 
Um, all right. And going with all of us, the CIM video is brilliant, so emotional. I love the post interviews, especially Kate Keen. Yeah, Kate's was gr Kate's was really good, and I feel like I need to have a follow up on that one. Um, Kate's someone that I've been following for a long time. We've never actually talked before. We had never had a conversation in person before. I think I maybe have messaged her once, or I don't know that we've DM'd. Maybe, um, I maybe have commented on her stuff, you know. And then I saw her there. I called out to her, and she came over and talked. Um, which was really nice. And then she sent me a message later. She was like, um, she DM me later and she's like, you know, thanks for interviewing me and sorry I wasn't very eloquent. And I was like, you were perfect. I don't know what you're talking about. And then she elaborated uh, on her Instagram stories, uh, sharing the link for the video about all the stuff that she wanted to say. So that was really nice too. So maybe it's time to follow up on that. Um, all right. Daniel Burton says, are you getting the Alpha Fly 3? Uh, I think event. Uh, the answer is eventually. Uh, I just now posted a reel for the Alpha Fly Two. You guys saw me unbox it, um, and so uh, I ran that uh, Monday on Monday. You know what? I, Alpha Fly Two is not my favorite, and I know that I've had that came out in 2022, and I had the benefit of all of 2023's racing shoes and even some of 2024's racing shoes to test since then. But the Alpha Fly 2 is not my favorite. See, it sucks when it's not. It sucks when the Nike products aren't good. Because then everyone's like, ah, it's because you don't like Nike. But the Alpha Fly 2 is not great. I felt like the airbags were behind, slightly behind posterior to where I wanted them to be. I didn't feel that way in the Alpha Fly 1. But I felt like that in the Alpha Fly 2. So it felt like where my foot was hitting the ground, I was landing on the front part of the airbags and not squarely in the middle. And then I, so I felt like I was just, there was something missing. But the upper fits so much better than Alpha Fly 1. The Alpha Fly 1 crunched my big toe so hard uh, every time. I had just a permanent black toe, toenail, from running in Alpha Fly 1 for a long time. But the Alpha Fly 2 is uh, a much better fit it's hard to get your foot in that shoe. But once you're in there, you're golden. But it still does all the, the typical Nike stuff, right? Like, it's all up in your arches. You just feel it. It's like rubbing in there the whole time. And it's weird, you know? So, um, yeah. So it's like, very, it feels very familiar and also very different. And it felt a little bit mm, like it missed a little something, you know? Uh... Matt Maldo one says super shoes just for races or for speed workouts as well. I love them for speed workouts. Uh, some people have different opinions. I'm going to read Rory Linkletter. He says that in the beginning of a, uh, training block, he likes to run in trainers because it's harder and then closer to the race. Well, he has other arguments too, saying that like, you know, your muscle activation is a little bit different. The stimulus is a little bit different, not just doesn't just make it harder, you know, but, um, and he doesn't want to do that until closer to the race time. But me, I want them all, I want them all the time. The limiting factor is the cost, right? These shoes aren't cheap and they don't last as long as daily trainers do. And so typically what most people do is they'll use them for races. I just heard from Molly Seidel at a Puma event during TRE. She says for a race, she runs with a fresh out of the box pair to race. And then she sit then after one race, She'll use that as a workout pair. That's how she goes through her shoes, you know. Mm. Uh, CV76 says, I'm the black toe runner then with Alpha Fly 1. There's actually a running store, running store, I think, in Canada, black toe running company. I think it's a pretty big shop. I see that they travel well. I see their shirts every, everywhere, all the, all the races I go to, you know. And uh, Mark Peterson says, maybe Alpha Fly 3 will be your Goldilocks version. Maybe. I mean, that'll be, I mean, ultimately that's good. Good shoes are good for the sport, you know, I think. Um, but I will probably not be able, if I can get, a sh I mean, uh, full laying it out there, uh, not disclosure is not the right word, but um, a Nike rep did reach out to me and um, inquired about opportunities to work together and I politely declined. And I think, and, and Drew was like, uh, I think they want to send you Alpha Fly 3. 
because Drew was aware of this. And I was like, I know, but I'll try to buy it like everyone else. And that's a shoe that I will prefer to buy my on my own. So, yeah. So that's it. If I can get it right away, uh, then I'll review it right away. Well, I'll run in it. I'll test it right away. But um, if not, I'll wait till it becomes available. I'm not in a super huge rush, you know? Uh, Mark says, you know, I, uh, I don't want to get my hopes up about my fitness too much early in a block. So I wait when it comes to uh, using the super shoes. Okay, interesting. I like that. And Liam Dory says, Black Toe Running Company is great. They're out of Toronto. Yeah, my wife actually asked about when we were going to go visit Toronto the other day. I think it was also in the context of if things go poorly next November, where should we move? <laughs> um, so uh, there's that, you know. Mm. And Lisa Becerra says, you know, if I were a sponsored athlete, I would definitely do the same with shoes. In other words, use a fresh pair right out of the box to race, and then after the one race, that shoe becomes a training shoe. That's not a bad approach, you know. Mm. And Martha says, I'm doing that with my Endorphin Pro 3, which has a Boston and Chicago Marathon on them, plus about 20 miles. They'll now be my longest run shoe before Boston, and I want a fresh pair for 24. I think by then, I don't know if this is under embargo or not, but since I've never met with Saucony, I'm only repeating what I think is may or may not be under embargo. I don't know if I can repeat that. Because that's the information I got from Thomas, and sometimes with him, I don't remember. He he does not, he doesn't always, when he tells me, when we're ta when Thomas and I talk about stuff, about like what's coming out when, we don't always say it in the context of embargoes. So I don't know. But at some point, there'll be an update to the Endorphin Pro 4. To the Endorphin Pro. We'll get the Endorphin Pro 4. 4, Pro 4. I know Thomas and Megan have it, and they've run in it. I don't have it. So I had have not run in it, but you know. Mm. Brian Albrecht says, it seems everyone has moved on from Adios Pro Evo 1 with the announcement of the FFI 3. Do you agree? Is it just because of a limited run for the Evo 1? Uh, I think part of it is it's a, you know, its new cycle came and went, and now a, a new new cycle has arrived. But uh, I think another part of it is that something that I said from the beginning when um, there was all the furor over a $500 seemingly single-use shoe is that like it's not really intended to be a public consumption shoe. Alpha Fly 3 is. And we've been seeing the Alpha Fly. I remember I saw Connor Mance running the Alpha Fly 3 at last year's Houston. And Houston is coming up again in a month. So it'll been over a year and the shoe still won't be out. I don't think it'll be out for Houston, you know? So, you know, um, people have been waiting for it for a long time. And now we're seeing lots of people. Ben Johnson already has 100 miles on his pair. That guy, uh, amazing. Um, Thomas has it. Megan, Robbie has it. Uh, everyone I know has it. Uh, Emily Heller has a pair, you know? So Drew has a pair too. I think he's been running in his. I think Tom, Tommy has his too. So every, all my friends have them. So I think that's what makes it exciting is that like now people are getting to actually, the people that we trust to tell us about shoes get to run in it now. And so that's what makes it exciting, which wasn't always the case, case for the evil one, you know? So that was hard. Mm. <laughs> Sean Devlin says, my wife and I have casually been exploring Northern options for beyond 24 hours. So uh, yeah. And uh, Daniel Estrella says, Toronto's great, Co. Make the move. That's what, that's what I hear. I mean, you know, if you think about it, isn't Toronto further south than, than Detroit? Like, latitudinally on the, on the globe? Yeah, I don't know. Mm. Alex Plasencia says, you know, I'm always afraid of a new fresh pair of shoes on race day. I've run in brand new pairs of shoes on race days before. Um... And I feel like if it's a new shoe that you've never tried before, that would make me nervous. If it's a new shoe that you have tried before, it doesn't make me nervous at all. And that's the that's the situation where I've run in a brand new pair of shoes for a race day. Like I think Meta Speed Sky, 
that was the situation. Metaspeed Sky Plus. And then one year I ran the Chicago Marathon in a pair of Pegasus. It was like my fourth pair of Pegasus that year. So I was like, I feel pretty confident with this shoe. Martha says that the Endorphin Pro 4 might not be out by April. Her friends at Milestone told me later if I later than that, if I remember correctly, like August. Really? Then why do oh, see I don't like it when shoes get sent super early. Like remember this year, um, the ten eighties. I had those those ten eighties came off embargo in October. I got them in like March, maybe June. Either way, four months is way too early. For me, anyway. I know for other people, they like to have it really early. But I was just like, I don't, I don't. I just, I was like, it's easier for me to just forget about the shoe for three months. And then I'll run it, you know? I suppose, though, it's better to have the shoe and have it sit in your house for a little while and then test it. Than, like, get it two days before the embargo lifts. And they're like, oh, now what do I do, you know? Uh, Adam says, I'd never use a pair fresh out of the box. There's always some variation in manufacturing. I'd go for one run or at least walk around in them. Yeah, I don't know if uh, I don't know if uh, my saddle does that or if she's just like, I trust Puma. And she's just like, open box, on feet. I, I, I feel like she would at least be like, all right, put them on and be like, all right, nothing feels weird. But I don't know. Richard Wilson says, I don't think the Endorphin Pro 4 is a secret. Well, I mean, it didn't get updated in 2023. The only super shoe, the only racing shoe update we got from Saucony was the Endorphin Elite. So I feel like we all knew Pro, Pro, Pro 4 was, or assumed Pro 4 was coming. It would have been weird if it didn't. But yes, yeah, so it's not a secret. But I'm trying to think if I've seen images or not. I don't know. I think I've been just not interacting with a lot of leaked images and stuff because I like to be surprised. Um, that I think the algorithms know not to show them to me anymore. I don't know. Brian says, we're we're all waiting for the fours to release so the three can finally go on sale. The three has been on sale before. I feel like it was on sale for a long time. Wasn't it? It, was, it, was on, it wasn't on sale for like, because it's a $225 shoe to begin with, which I think is amazing. It's a great price. They, they could have sold it for 250. No one would have blinked. I'm glad that they sold it for two twenty five, but I thought I saw, I could have swore I saw it for one seventy five. I don't know. Oh, and Steve Zabrowski says that the Alpha Fly three comes on January fourth, so I guess it'll be less than a year, and maybe that's because once you like register a shoe as a prototype, you have a year to run in the shoe. I don't know about like what the or else is on that for as far as world athletics rules go. And last year's Houston would have been like middle of January. So it's technically less than a year for the prototype. I don't know. Interesting. Daniel Estrella says, oh yeah, Robbie from Believe the Run racing the Pro Force on Thanksgiving. He posted photos of them on Strava and they look great. Oh yeah, that's right. I did see that, I remember. And Alex Plasencia says, yes, the uh, Endorphin Pro 3 was on sale for a little while. Yeah, see? Brian Albrecht said he got it for $200 in the fall. That's a good price. You know? And John Bohoy and a couple other people said, and Joe, Joe Carter as well, said the Endorphin Pro 3 was on sale during Black Friday for 25% off. All right, what's the math on that? 22 50 45 and then half of that. So like 50 bucks, yeah, so like 175-ish, you know? Interesting. And CV76 wants to know, are most shoes manufactured in Vietnam? I think they are now. For a while they were manufactured in Taiwan, right? And then at some point, uh, a lot of that got pushed out during the pandemic and it moved to Philippines and Vietnam, right? No, is that? I don't really look at where the shoes are made. It's not something that I've been. I only know that because of supply chain discussions. I don't. I don't. I can't remember the last time I looked at a tag on a shoe to see where it was made. 
Yeah. Hmm. Matt Byer says he paid $168 for the endorphin. Are these, uh, uh, is that the picture that you got here too? His uh, profile pic is the endorphin pro threes, I think. Yeah, that's what it looks like. He got $168. That's a deal. That's a deal. Nice. Mm, Carlo Car Carbrella says, Hey, go, any opinions on the Alpha Flight 2? I was very disappointed in it. Maybe it's because I'm used to running the Vipper Fly 3 now, but the Alpha Flight 2 feels very heavy. Um, I don't know if you just got here, Carlo, but I did talk about it uh, a little bit earlier. Um, I feel it feels like a great 2022 shoe. That's a weird statement. Um, I feel like there were a lot of great shoes in 2023 that I prefer. Um, but I ultimately, I feel like the airbag was in the wrong. It was in the, it wasn't in a great spot. I felt like the airbag was slightly behind where it needed to be. I was landing on the wrong. I felt like I was always landing on the wrong part of the shoe. So I felt like I was missing a little bit of like springiness from the shoe. But the upper felt great. Mm. All right. Um, and Matt Byer says, yes, the profile pick that he has is of the Endo Pro 3 in the new colorway. Oh, okay. Tommy says, I didn't mind. What's going on, Tommy? says, I didn't mind the Alpha Fly 2. I just got it for the first time a couple weeks ago. I mean, it's good. It's really good. Um, I could see why people prefer to race in the Alpha Fly 1. And I do think that there are a couple of issues that came out in 2023 that are better, you know? And then there's some shoes that I have for 2024 that I also enjoy more. So it's it's really good. But it's not top of the line, I don't think. I don't know. Mm hmm All right. That reminds me with Tommy being here. Tommy and I are going to be interviewing someone for a relay today. So I got to end this live stream early, a little bit early today. Um, and Tommy runs does say, you know, I like the Alpha Fly, Alpha Fly 3 better though, because he does have it and he has been running in it, you know. <laughs> uh, and going with Oliver says, Kira D'Amato told me personally, she didn't like the Alpha Fly 2 at all. Well, all the races that I've seen her run since the Alpha Fly 2 has been out have been in the Alpha Fly 1. And I think that she did a great job of dodging the question when she ran at the World Championships in Eugene. And she was just like, you know, I just got it and I didn't, uh, I don't have enough miles in it uh, for a short buildup. And I feel just more, more confident in the Alpha Fly 1. So I'm going to go with that. That was a really nice way of phrasing that. Keep the sponsors happy, you know. Um, all right, let's get to some of the other stuff that's in this bag because there's some fun stuff that's in here, weird stuff. Um, I happened to run into the CEO of Smithwick, the socks, and he gave me another pair of socks. I've also already worn these because I like the Smithwick socks. Although I don't love blue socks. I, I like black or white socks, but these are super comfortable, these Smithwick socks. Um, they're like the low show. They've got a little bit of an extra uh, kick out for the Achilles, but it's not padded. So I really like this. And then the Swinthwick, the sock, this ribbed part here, really comfy. So that was really nice to just, he he came up to me and he was, he introduced himself and I didn't recognize him right away. Like, cause how would I recognize someone from Smithwick? Um, but he's like, I work with Smithwick. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks for sending the socks to the day. They were great. He's like, well, thanks for unboxing them on the show. And he's like, do you need more socks? Here's more socks. And he just like pulled them out of a bag. He's like, here's more socks. Come to the booth. We'll give you more socks. And I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good on socks right now. You already sent a box. Uh, but he was super nice. So I really like that. That was fun. Um, and then something else that happened was, oh, here's another. There's another flavor of Tailwind Rapid Hydration, the orange. I feel like this is what I would rather have after a night out rather than taking this before you start stuff. I guess you could do both. But I feel like when I think of rapid hydration, and some of you guys mentioned Element, which I do have a sample pack of Element that's been sitting over here waiting for me to do a mukbang. Maybe we'll do that this week. But I feel like these are better for when you need a, a little bit of extra hydration in the morning. Um, am I saying it wrong? Swick Wift? No, I thought it was Smith Wick. Swiftwick. Ah, I keep saying the beer. Yeah. Sean Devlin making fun of me. Smithwick's. It's Swick. 
and you're Calvin saying Swick Wick. That's not it. It's Swift Wick. I've been saying it wrong. Swift Wick. Do you see that? There we go. I'm showing you guys the sock. Um, yeah, there we go. And Brian Lang says, have any pro runners ever jumped on the IV dripper recovery that the tech bros were doing? I don't think that they can because of uh, drug testing rules. I think that uh, you have to, if you're a pro athlete, I, I don't know the rules because I'm not a pro athlete. Why would I bother to know them? But I think anything that you're taking through IV, you have to be super, super careful with. Um, that's, uh, it, they talk about it a little bit in the win it all costs book. They talk about Salazar and Galen rep, how, um, Salazar would basically intentionally dehydrate Galen in the taper for a race. And then he would have him run super hot and then dehydrate him. And he basically would quote unquote collapse during a shakeout run, like two or three days before the race. So that he'd have to go to the hospital or see a medical professional and get an IV drip, among other things. But anyway, uh, yeah. And Richard Wilson says it's illegal to do that. That, yeah, I think I'm not exactly sure on what the nature of the rules are, but pros got to be careful about IV stuff. Like we talked about yesterday, we talked about L-carnitine. You can take, I think you can take as much L-carnitine as you want if you drink it, but you cannot take it as an injection. That is against, I don't know if that's still against the rules, but back when people were all up on L-carnitine, that was the rule. And I think it's the injection part that's offending. Also, there's something about the way L-carnitine works, the onboarding process or something like that. If you can inject it, your body can handle a much bigger dose, of, uh, something like that. I don't know. Mm. Calvin says, you can't even eat a burrito as an elite. You can eat all the burritos you want as an elite athlete, Calvin. It's not the burritos. <laughs> uh, and Brian wants to know, well, then do any amateur non-elite or non-elite runners do IV drips? I've never done one. Um, I'm trying to think. I thought I saw a booth that was, there was definitely a booth that was doing it at TRE. That was offering like the IV drips. People were getting it done. And I'm just like, oh, I don't know. I'm like, think think about how much I'm sure I'm sure there are regulations, and it's regulated. But like, think about how much licensure that like a tattoo parlor has to undergo, like, and all these like IV booths, IV um, drip places are popping up. I'm just like, I don't know about that, guys. Anyway, And Vanessa Martinez says, if you take steroids due to a medical condition, will that disqualify you? Um, I think uh, I think the answer is for most situations, yes. I think so. Uh, I mean, there are certain like medical conditions where you you can, but I think that you're it, it's super it's super super tricky, and I think that even then your serum levels have to be below what's uh, allowable. I'm not exactly sure. I've not really looked into that that much. Um, all right. Let's get to a couple more things. Another thing, uh, another person I ran into was my friend Jonathan Levitt. And um, he's like, hey, I'm here to give out stickers. And I got a sticker somewhere. And he gave me a hat, too, for his hat. He was there because he was hosting a panel with some Puma athletes. And then I saw him earlier in the day and he's like, I brought all this merch to give away for people that came to the panel, but I want you to have a hat. I was like, cool. He also gave me a pair of socks, which the socks are super nice. I believe they're stance socks. They're not like marked with this logo, but this this color scheme. And so it's a really nice pair. I think I, I've worn those too. And that's why they're not here, but really nice socks. And then um, here's one. Here's a pair of Gooder sunglasses. Now, Gooder is going to send me some stuff. They're going to send me those, um, I think, anyway. Going to send me those um, ski goggles, which I'm super excited about. Um, but then I got these at the Gooder party. So I count that as swag. Even though sometimes I will review Gooder glasses and stuff. We've tried on a lot of Gooder glasses on this show before. Let's see if these are any good. I, I don't know that I... 
I don't know that these are going to work for me. Not just because they're pink. But these are the same ones that Thomas tried on on the on on the podcast the other day when he when it was just him and Robbie. So I'll, I'll try them on here. They're very pink, and they are kind of cat eye, like Thomas was saying. Um, and so I think I think this is one that I'm going to give to my niece. So, yeah, I think she'll enjoy these quite a bit. I don't, I don't think that they're for me. I, I think even if I had them in black, which they do have them in black, um, I don't think they would work for me. So there's that. Eliza says they look great. And Frank LaHulier says they look, <laughs> those are terrible. <laughs> uh, I think you guys are probably both correct. But I think this is the new model that's coming out. So, or it, it is out already, I'm not sure. You know? Um, yeah. <sighs> one more thing. One, one more thing in here. And then the last thing that's in here, I got from... Uh, I got this from the Brooks booth. And uh, we sit down, and they go through over... They go over, like, 12 different shoes with me. And we didn't even talk about most of the trail shoes um, or even most of, most of the daily train. We just went over all the shoes. We went over so many shoes. And at the end, they're like, any questions? I'm like, no, that was a lot of information. But I think I'm good for right now in terms of what I need for, for this weekend. I'm like, great. By the way, uh, would you like to come to the Brooks after party? And I was like, yes. And they gave me, oh, I gave it to my daughter already. But uh, every year, like, to go to the Brooks party, like, someone from the Brooks booth has to give you the um, special invite token. Um, and Saucony did it one year when they had a, they had a party. There's like the Thursday night big party. That's Brooks. And then Wednesday, one year Saucony had a big party and they gave out these like globe bracelets. Um, but this year Brooks gave out a slap bracelet and it said Brooks on it. So they gave me that. Here's, here's your bracelet. And they're like, they're like, put your arm out. So I put my arm out and they slapped it on me. And they're like, by the way, do you drink? And I was like, yes, I do. And they're like, then have one of these. And they gave me this. I did take a peek at this a little earlier, but it's kind of fun. Uh, it is a flask, as you can see from the box. But it is a branded Brooks flask. Focus. Let's get some focus on here. Brooks flask for the glycerin 21. And it's tapered. So I don't know if this is supposed to like fit in a jacket pocket really easily or what, but I feel like, I don't know. I feel like um, this isn't technically a running accessory, but I feel like I can make this into a running accessory. You know, it has an attached, you know, um, my, uh, ornery mule racing, which is like the local race company here, the same company that put on that, uh, that trail race I did in over Halloween in the same park, they have a race called frozen gnome. I, I I'm assuming it's a different course. Um, but there's a 10 K and a 50 K option. It's January 6th. And I feel like, oh, this will fit. I wonder if this will fit in a hydration pack in the front when you're really cold halfway through the race. A little bit of um, maybe some Jameson in there. Warm you right up for the second three-hour portion of a winter 50K, you know? Cobalt Blue says it's a flask for hydration beverages. I'll put, you know what, I'll put some, I'll put some, you know what will go well in here? Rapid hydration. Or uh, maybe some before you start. This, this before you start, though, this looks like it's a contraceptive. I, I just... I did. The, the packaging is all the packaging is wrong but anyway Luis says you gotta put some tequila in there maybe uh steve zambrowski says i knew that for chicago just fill this with malort can you imagine drinking this much malort anybody anyone no no you cannot you cannot drink that maybe fireball um i think i get i don't know that i feel this is pretty big Maybe some Mad Dog 2020. <laughs> uh, 
I don't know. <laughs> uh, Calvin says, you know what? I think if you did that, you'd either die or set the new world record. <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, Brian Link says, about, how about coffee or hot chocolate? Coffee would be nice. Oh, maybe if I... I don't know that I'll do the frozen gnome just because it's like a week before um, Houston. It's too bad it's not like the week after Houston because that'd be fun. Um, but like... I feel like if you're doing a 50K, why not just fill your water bladder, like two liters of coffee? How, how, how much caffeine do you think that would be if you put two liters of coffee in a hydration bladder, like in your pack? Uh, like 12 ounces, eight ounces is a cup of coffee, right? And that's what, 100 milligrams of caffeine? So what's two liters? It's like eight, that's like eight, um, that's like eight cups of coffee so that's 800 milligrams of caffeine uh that's a lot that's a lot <laughs> and brian lang says cleaning that bladder with coffee in it would be a nightmare probably probably but i don't know and calvin says this is the flask that you take to spike all the aid stations at an ultra everyone is now boozed and having a good time I don't, you know what this fits in hand really nice the taper is very comfortable i feel like i could just have this. this this could be a problem i don't know <laughs> uh. sega dreamcast says like two liters of ca coffee would be too much caffeine it would be a lot of caffeine wouldn't it i think maybe like you but over the course of uh like three hours that's still probably a lot yeah i don't know Say your dream guys is like the brusk flask is for the fast drunk on the go. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm going to bring this around for the holidays this year. Just be like, mm, Mike, you want something to drink? I'll be like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know why I love this a lot. I just uh, really enjoy this. Just like, like the Air Force inspired, like the, it's kind of like a, you know, a pilot inspired glycerin logo it just says and it says brooks on both sides uh uh calvin says you know i mean co you take 300 milligrams of caffeine during the marathon not counting any pre-race coffee that's true i've taken three uh martin calves before but that's of course over that's over three hours and i have been telling you guys that my stomach just feels wrecked lately after all those martins so i don't know Hmm. Let's see. Brian says, you know, trying to get into long runs and using a hydration bladder, but I don't know how to get electrolytes in without filling the bladder with it. Yeah, I just I just put I put tailwind. I put tailwind in the in the bladder. Um it's fine. They uh they say I feel like all the major brands, like Camelback, uh Nathan ultimate direction i feel like they all say that they have uh something about the materials that they use shouldn't pick up the flavor of what you put in there you know so i think you'll be fine sean devlin says this is the best thing that brooks has made in years i i i do really like here, here's the thing i don't even drink that much like hard liquor you know anymore i mean I, i'm at the point where i'm drinking just as many athletic brewing beers as i am regular beers um so like this flask seems really excessive to me but i don't know it just sits in hand really nicely i feel like this is one one <laughs> maybe a self-destructive way but one way if you are on your phone maybe too much just put one of these in your hand <laughs> uh yeah and bishan mom is back says hi i'll finally made it it's good to see you i feel like it's been a while how you doing? Um, yeah, and Brian Lang says, you know, okay, thanks for the advice about the hydration bladder. I was just worried about mold. Yeah, if you're really worried about the mold, just when you're done, just make sure you flush the system really good. And then what I usually do is, after I've washed it, I have like a soft-ish brush that I use to get in all the crevices of the hydration bladder. And then after it dries, I think that the thing that causes mold the most is that people dry them just flat 
And so the two sides of the plastic, while they're wet, are stick, stuck to each other. And so what I do is I have like little ramekins for sauces and stuff. Uh, and I put those inside or like crumple up if you have newspaper um, or paper towels, crumple up into a ball so that it creates a separation between the, the bottom and the top layer of the plastic of the bladder. So that way it can air out properly. That's the thing that I would say. And Stephen Lung says, I just I rinse and then just toss them in the freezer for next use. The freezing of it doesn't mess up the um the plastic. I feel like that would be hard on the on the plastic. Like the crystals would eat at the seams and stuff. No. Interesting. And Adam says, you know, we don't get mold in Colorado except in our breads. Oh, really? Because is it that dry? Interesting. And Paul Hoban says, you know, fill, fill the flask with chamomile tea in case you get extra fidgety on your live podcast. I know, but then on the podcast, then you'd see me just like hitting this. <laughs> and that would be pretty ridiculous. Um, all right. Speaking of being fidgety for uh, a podcast, I do got to get ready for that interview. Um, it should be coming out Friday. Um, I'll tell you about it tomorrow after it, after we figure out, you know, once it's in the can, you know, they'll tell you about it tomorrow, but it should be pretty interesting. Uh, Tommy will be on it too. And that'll be on relay. If you're not subscribed to relay, you should find the relay podcast and subscribe to it. It's pretty fun. Um, and go check out the Brooks ghost max video that came out today. Um, if you want to see my thoughts on that shoe and then I'll see you guys tomorrow, same time as today. 1, 1 p.m. Central Time, right on this channel. Until I see you then, though, be safe out there, everybody. Thanks.